Hey guys, per the request of Tasser Elda, last video, here's why I now use Google Docs. When I did my Notion video, I did a segment showing this kind of grid system, which I still use as a tactic for any time I'm shopping around, and I highly, highly recommend you use this. Huge disclaimer, the choice of software is extremely personal. I'll explain my reasons, but they're personal to me. Ignore any factors that don't apply to you and keep your situation in mind. So my grid looks like this. And let's go over the boxes I have and why I now use Google Docs. Box one has to be accessible in tablet, phone, and browser window. So this is because I work on it on my computer at work, uh, like between calls and when I'm on lunch. So I need to have the ability to pull up everything to do my prep in one browser window and that's it. Uh, I also don't have a laptop anymore. I have a Galaxy tab with a keyboard for when I'm actually looking stuff up in like PDFs and at my table. So both the browser and the tablet versions of whatever software I use need to be good for me. They need to be usable. Both Notion and Google Docs fit this technically. However, I'll kind of note that I much prefer the browser version of Notion over the tablet version. There are some subtle differences that are probably only deal breakers to someone with autistic tendencies, like my good self. Example, I found moving blocks in the Notion app rather annoying on a tablet versus in the browser you can just click and drag them. So box two, it has to be easily backup a uh, uh, bowl. Uh, the backups have to be easy and they also have to be usable, not just files and storage, but if I need access to a particular session or note, I want to be able to just go right there and get it. Now this is one where Notion slips up just a little bit. It's technically true. You can make fully downloadable backups in an HTML form, offline versions. Uh, however, they don't interact the same as the online Notion does. They basically look like old 90s web pages. They're usable, they're just not quite as nice. Docs gets a one up uh, since a downloaded doc opens in Word or LibreOffice or OpenOffice or WordPad or such. So by using separate documents, files, and folders, interfacing with my backups is literally no different than interfacing with the online version. So the backup part of that is real nice. Backup rule of three. If you genuinely want to keep something with no risk of truly losing it, you have to have three versions, one physical, one offline, and one online. Truly, paper crumbles, wets, burns, computers crash, clouds rely on someone else's servers. If you have one copy in all three of these places, then no matter what happens, you have a backup somewhere and you can copy it over or scan it or whatever. Via Google Docs, I kind of natively have all three. I have the cloud form, which is how I made it. I have the printed form, which I print for my session notes. And then because I just click the download button when I print and stuff it in an offline backup drive, then I bake the backup process into the game prep itself. So it's kind of always done. It's always up to date. It's always to the most recent session. And it's not dependent on extra steps like remembering to go back later and do something. So box three, the big one for me in this case is printing. See everything I've mentioned all the way up to this point, Notion does do. Sure, one might be more pretty than the other, but for the most part, Notion checks all these boxes too, but here's the one that really got me to kind of fully switch over into Google Drive. Notion's printing is just really clunky. Uh, it works, sure, but it only works okay. And then it suddenly works a lot less fine when stacked up against the basic control P of a Word doc. Like just click a button, click print, there, it's printing. Not to mention that the one page rule I have, that becomes a lot more viable when the interface I'm using is designed to be printed. No excessively large font, no double spacing, no space after paragraph. If you go back and copy paste text that you've typed up in Notion and put it into a word processing program of some time, you'll see what I mean. The formatting there is very much designed for screens and not for paper. So box four, floating 
images. So seeing as I am now using images a lot more than I used to, not just for maps, but random inspiration pictures and just things that help me set my mind into the session, it frees up a lot more space or it's a lot more space effective to have a floating image with text wrapped around it and placing them in docs or Word is just so smooth. Like I copy, I paste, I make it floating, I push it to the side, done and done. Oh sure, you can have images in Notions and you can move them all around, but they don't tightly wrap in the text and you have to move text blocks around in order to achieve a similar look. And in a Word document, it's just way more fluid and natural. Stack on top of that, the markup feature, the shapes tool, I can add map markers, details, call out bubbles, etc., which I can't really do in Notions that way. Side note, for anyone who really uses images and shapes more than I do, here's a cheat. PowerPoint or Google Slides in my case. See, go to the page setup and change it to an eight by 11 or whatever size you want. And then not only can you type with all the same formatting options you would get in a Word document, but you have access to tons of shapes and options for truly putting together a sort of open canvas prep sheet. This also still fits the first couple of rules we discussed as well, just saying. I've used this to make cards, I've used it to make personal small character sheets, and now all my videos use it too. End of side note. So now for an extra credit is the image insert feature. So my work machine, where I do 99% of my prep, doesn't allow for online image searching. They actually have a Google Images blocker on there. However, I have my phone. So while prepping, I can pull up any map or image I need and upload it to my Google Drive into a little folder that I have. Then here in Google Docs, I have an insert from Drive option and a little folder manager, manager right there where I can just click and drag I want what I want out of my drive. So using this workaround, I can still continue my prep with minimal interference, really. Oh sure, you can add images and notions or have an image-based database, which I used to have, but the database is more like pages with images on them rather than files in a folder. And for this little extra credit feature, I kind of just like having files in a folder. It's not really a deal breaker, so that's why I add it as an extra credit box rather than a straight box. But still, it's a really nice, useful feature, especially in my situation. All right, so the next box, sorta, is interconnectivity. So originally, I had a requirement for interconnectivity, the World Anvil wiki style, click here, click here, click there, and it takes you all around your notes. Um, and Notion just runs away with that. Even though Google has smart chips, Notion just runs away with this category. I mean, the nesting capabilities in Notion just cannot be topped. However, GDocs now has smart chips that do work, so I at least can type an at symbol and mention another document, and I can still open it in a new tab. But honestly, and the more kick to the whole thing is that I don't need this anymore. Honestly, I don't use it or need connectivity like that anymore. It's just, it's just not a box I care about checking as much anymore. Now, side side note, I've gotten criticism for my tendencies to shop around software and change platforms. I have four videos about Notion already, so why change? The reality is my needs changed as my DM style did, and needs should dictate what tools you, well, need. You shouldn't feel tied to a specific tool set, and you shouldn't feel tied to a specific platform, and you really, really shouldn't feel ashamed for changing things up if there are legitimate causes or changes to your environment. Don't let stuff like that hang you up. Uh, use what serves you best. All right, moving on. Lastly, box five, reduced friction. Now, this is the most personal of the boxes to check, but I've learned if you want to achieve things in life, you ought to learn how to reduce friction. You've probably heard this before a zillion different ways, but basically reducing friction means reducing the amount of steps between you and the thing. Each brain is different, so something that is a hang up for me won't bother you, but something that hangs you up won't affect me. If I open a blank page and I start getting distracted with how should I organize it or what if I don't have a folder here or is there a way I can get all these images to load just right or if I get distracted with PDFs and all of that versus naming conventions all of that is me spending my attention on the way I do prep not the prep itself if I spend eight minutes staring off into space 
mulling on the fact that my other scripts and notes are in Google Drive, but my D&D prep is in Notion, it might seem like nonsense, but in my brain, things like that are like nails on a chalkboard. And I know that other people have their own equivalent of niggles that keep them from focusing on their work. Okay, hell, at one point I got so frustrated with both programs, I said F all that and I went to Notepad and a flash drive. At the end of the day, I just find Google Docs interface familiar and less distracting. Heck, I much prefer it over Microsoft Word. I hate Word and I avoid it wherever I can. The default interface is awful to me. So I have this thing where I need one central location for all my stuff and Google Drive just kind of works better for that. Cookbook folder with ready to print recipes that I can also share with other people that I can also access online at the store when I need an ingredients list, pull up on my tablet or have in a binder. Check, 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 check. A slide where I can access all my stick figures online in one window and parse out scripts into slides and record in one go instead of painstakingly setting one image per second in a video editor. Check, 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 check. A quick make doc where I can put pictures, checklists, plans for crafts, and then open a calendar on the side and set a shopping reminder. Check, 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 check. A shared spreadsheet for stitch logs, projects, stats. Check, 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 check. A spreadsheet with tabs for my games, with monster capture, XP tracking, or even saving machine checker. All the checks. And then everything I have need is in one place with one login and it holds data, aka images, in a way that Notion kinda doesn't, aka holding raw files similar to folders on a computer. Are there some things that Notion does better? Oh heck yeah. But if we ask ourselves first what our needs are and our wants are and then see what the program actually fulfills, well, one kind of checks quite a few more boxes for me at this point. The last box I have is universality. See, using this method, I can now replicate this exact same organization structure with folders on a computer, with Word, with Google, with Google Drives, with Proton Drive, with pages on Apple, open off it, off, online, offline. It's not really dependent on one program specifically. The Notion technique, well... Again, I still have a fond spot in my heart for Notion. As certain applications, it can't be topped. For me, right now though, Google Drive just kinda has the win. I hope you found this informative or entertaining. Let me know your thoughts, and if you have any suggestions or topic you want covered, comment below and it could be the next stick figure video. Thanks so much.